Good afternoon, everybody. We are going to get started with the webinar today. We really appreciate you joining us, and we thank you for being a partner with the Appalachian Regional Commission. This webinar is for basic agencies, for local development districts, or LDDs, grantees, and others that are interested in learning about the Basic Agency Monitoring Report, or BAMR for short. My name is Julie Lawhorn, and I'm an Infrastructure Program Analyst with the Appalachian Regional Commission. I'll be co-hosting this webinar today, along with my colleagues Candace Stribling, Chris Brazell, and Catherine Fierick. You will hear from them later today in the webinar. We have one other member of our infrastructure team, uh, Sarah James, who is not with us today, but she is also um, part of the staff that supports the basic agency program here at ARC. Before we get going, I want to go over a few things of housekeeping. You'll see on your screen, um, if you're logged into the webinar software, that there is a Q&A box in the top of your webinar software. You can go in there and type us questions, and we will respond to them. If we don't get to them, we may follow up with you directly after the webinar. And we're going to be taking a few pauses to address some of the questions as they come in. This webinar is being recorded, and we will post it on our YouTube channel. The address is there for all of the ARC videos. We do have a poll later. We want to hear from you guys and know who has um, the ability to access YouTube and not. So we'll get to that later. Um, and for audio, we want to ask you to use your telephone line to dial the 866 number to uh, dial in using our conference call service. Please note that you can likely also hear me through your computer if you're logged into the webinar software. Um, but due to some technical difficulties we've had in the past, we're using the conference line as a backup. Uh, we think it will work best if you mute your phone. Um, if we find um, that we have extra background information or sounds, we will be able to mute all of the participant lines. Um, so I want to address that and just let you know that we would love to hear from you from the Q&A box. But due to the number of folks on the call, we will be limiting the two-way audio. So we'll, this will be a one-way audio, and the webinar will be recorded. You'll see there's a, a note and a link there to some information about performance measures, because that's a frequently asked question um, related to BAMR that often comes up. And we will share these slides and information with you after the webinar. So let's go ahead and get started. I want to go over the webinar agenda to tell you the information that we're going to cover today. It's Similar to prior webinars where we talk about the basic agency monitoring report, this year uh, that information is due on January 2nd. And we're going to take a slightly different approach where we're going to jump in and show you the directory and some of the contact information pages that are really critical to actually getting in and entering this BAMR information. I'm going to show you a few new nifty BAMR functions. Then I'll turn it over to my colleague Chris, and he's going to show you some information, some new features in ArcNet that you can use the database for to request amendments and for state basic agencies to notify us of your ASAP drawdown requests. So these are new. They're features that work outside of BAMR, and we want to let you know about them during this webinar as well. We want to definitely take your questions, so please chime in. And we also want to save a little bit of time for discussion to hear back from you all. Um, there's a training that we're uh, tentatively planning for March for state basic agencies. And we want to hear your feedback about this process and other things and how things are going and the program overall. Before we get going, I do want to get a sense, and this is your chance to weigh in and let us know. I'm going to launch a quick poll. Um, barring no technical difficulties. There's a poll on your screen. We want to know who's on the webinar today. If you're an LDD or PDD, a state or federal basic agency, um, a program manager, consultant, or someone else just interested in ARCnet. Um, I'm going to leave this open for another, say, 10 seconds. Right now, it looks like most of the folks have got 11. Most of the folks are either state or federal agencies with a majority from the federal basic agencies. So thank you all for that. I'm going to Close this poll if I can. Let's see. Close poll. OK. I believe I closed that. And you may be able to see the results on your screen. OK. Let's get back to our, web, our webinar here. Great. OK.
I'm going to start out the, the information we're going to present with a little bit of information to ground us on um, who we are as a group and um, what our role and why we're doing this in the first place. So um, the basic idea here is that we uh, at ARC are not authorized to administer our own construction projects that we are investing in with our partner uh, communities. And so therefore, we use a basic agency uh, partnership with many of you guys to help us administer those projects. So there's a lot of roles. The one that we're going to focus on here today is that there's an, an administrative role that you all have as a basic agency to do several things. And one of them is to provide an annual project status report. We call it the BAMR, the Basic Agency Monitoring Report. Each year, we collect this in the fall. Um, this year, the deadline is January 2nd. Um, and you might be asking, you know, what is this information used for? Why do we do this? Um, and the idea here is that it helps us track the project so that we can know um, where they are in terms of milestones. And we can also try to hotspot and troubleshoot in case there is a problem. Part of this uh, grew out of a concern and an interest from our inspector general here at the ARC, who wanted to know um, the status of projects, and particularly some of the projects that seemed to have been stalled and had funds that were tied up, um, but we lacked sufficient information to be able to say what exactly was going on with them after they had been approved. So in the past, I think it's three or four years now, we've gathered tremendous information with your help, and it's really helped us um, hotspot and get on top of some of the funds that may be stalled. And we can also um, report back if there's ever a question or a special interest in a project, we can go in the database and we can let inquiring minds know um, that, yes, indeed, this project is here at this stage and there's a specific issue or problem or that it's on track. So it's been a really great tool, and we appreciate your partnership and working with us over the years to do that. Just a little bit more grounding, um, the federal basic agencies that we work mostly with um, include Rural Development, HUD, EDA, and the Federal Highway um, Administration. These are the most common ones. You'll see that TVA was on there, but they are no longer a federal basic agency um, with ARC. <clears throat> we have many state basic agencies. Um, there's a lot of them listed down here. There's around 12 or 13. This list kind of grows um, as, the, as the years go by. And here's who we are in the Washington um, ARC office. The infrastructure team includes um, myself, Julie, Chris, Sarah, Catherine. And there's additional support folks here, including our director, Molly um, Candace. And we welcome your feedback and suggestions to any of us directly or through the BAM or email that you see down there at the bottom. So before we get to what we call BAMR time, um, which is where you'll be going into these forms to provide information on the projects, we wanted to just stop and address some of the issues that often come up when folks um, are maybe new or there's staff turnover or there's a question about um, how do I actually get to that project, my name's not on it, and so on and so forth. So um, we want to demonstrate, I'm going to transition to our test database in just a minute, and we're going to show you the key user roles um, in the directory, which is really key here. Because we found that sometimes this is where folks are getting stuck, and it's often a roadblock, is just not having the right name associated with the right project for your basic agency. And we can help you do that. We, in fact, want to help you do that because um, because of the volume of projects, it's just really a bottleneck if you rely on Chris and me and Catherine and Sarah to enter all of the project information for every um, agency. So we've decentralized, and we've really empowered you guys to go into ARCnet and go into the directory and add the people as they come and go or change projects. You guys have complete control to go in there and edit that and add people so that they can log in. Um, so a note, first of all, if you are unable to log into ARCnet, um, somebody in your agency got an email from us, and that person is in the database, and that person can log in and use their login credentials to add you to the directory. So if you're one of those folks who are not quite yet in there, um, somebody at your agency can help you get there. And we want to help you um, understand the steps to get there. So I have this screen, and um, when I go to the live version of our database, you'll see me step through this. But I want to highlight um, on this page, there is a directory button <clears throat> that will pull up options and menus for your agency. And you can select up on the top, once you select directory, you can select whether you're a federal or state agency. And then you can go into each of your state agencies, and you can add contacts 
the basic, the three pieces of information that are minimally required are your first name, your last name, and your email. Once you put that in there, um, that person can then go and create a login and get into ArcNet. Okay. Um, the second level um, is that, uh, and again, I'll demonstrate this in real life time, is that um, beyond the directory, which is sort of like a phone book, it's sort of like where you put the information so that you can um, draw from it later, is there's project level contacts in the database. And I've put a couple highlights here is that if you log into ARCnet and you see that you want to change um, the primary contact to your colleague or your coworker or you want to add a LDD or grantee to um, the contacts tab, you would select that project, you'd go to the top and select contact, contacts on the side, and then there's a button there that you'll see I've highlighted to add or change the basic agency contact. So um, at this point, I'm going to transition and I'm going to share with you um, I'm going to share the demonstration of ArcNet at this time. I'm going to take you through the login, and I will show you where those directory input um, pieces are located. So again, um, just to clarify, if you're looking at our screen today, you'll see that there's a URL that is a uh, test site. You should not use this site. You should use arc.arc.gov when you're looking to log into this um, uh, database. And uh, let me make sure I said that right. ARCnet, arcnet.arc.gov. Um, and I believe that's in your PDFs and the handouts that we sent to you as well. So you'll use your email, your login. If you forget your password, you can click on Forget Password. It will be sent to you. And we are using a demonstration site again. So all the information in here is uh, not exactly real, but we're using it to demonstrate for the purposes of this webinar. Before we get started, um, the directory is what I was referencing earlier. The directory over here on the left is where you'll go, and you can select whether you're a federal or state basic agency. In this situation, I'm logged in as an Ohio basic agency. So I can go to Ohio, select my agency, and I can add a new contact. And again, the only required fields are the first, last name, and email. And that will update this directory for this um, state or federal basic agency. If I'm Ohio, I cannot edit the information for North Carolina. There's no ability for me to go in there and edit it. Going back to your dashboard, that's sort of like your home page. So if you're ever lost in ARCnet, you can always go to the dashboard, click on dashboard. And at this point, I want to point out that there are several different views. You can slice and dice the project views for what you can see using the tabs up at the top menu bar. And it's a variety of different classifications based on whether the project is open or pending or closed. And for the purpose of this webinar, we're going to focus on the open projects for your agency, which in this case is the Ohio EPA Open tab. And if you want to drill down um, as an individual user, in your case, you would go to, um, for basic agencies, you would go to My BA Open, and that would list the projects for which you um, are the primary basic agency contact, meaning that you are the one responsible for signing off and finalizing the BAMR data for that project. So in this dashboard, what I'm trying to demonstrate is that you can see all of the open projects for your agency that may be across different users, and you can just look at the ones that you are responsible for by going to My BA Open. At this time, I do want to take a pause and let you know that there is the ability um, for LDDs and grantees to go in and enter information. And you will be able to um, have a different view. They won't be able to finalize and certify the information. But we found that there are some basic agencies that have a large um, inventory of projects, and they enlist the help of grantees and LDDs 
uh, on the ground to go in and pre-populate the information for the purposes of BAMR, and that is okay. Um, ultimately, that grantee or LDD can provide sort of a first cut of information so that you can get the information into the system about your projects. But that LDD or grantee user cannot finalize or certify the information. Um, that's where it comes down to this primary contact on a project level basis. So you're going to want to make sure that the projects that you see listed here have the appropriate primary contact for your agency. And then another level is optional, is that you can provide a project director by going into the actual project. And I will demonstrate that there is a project in here that has that capability. Um, you would select the project by clicking on the blue link, going to the Contact tab, and Contacts again. And in this case, they have actually added um, a user, a primary contact, who is like the director or the mayor or somebody like that. In this, exist, in this example, this person has an email and a first and last name. And Gary can go in and can actually input information into BAMR by clicking on the BAMR input. Um, this is not Gary's view. This is the basic agency view. But I can go in here as a basic agency, and I can see that when I'm ready to fill in this information, and I'm, I'm skipping around here, um, so you'll know I'm kind of going all over the place. But the, the point I'm trying to demonstrate now at this point is that um, this project had the ability for a grantee or an LDD to enter information. And in fact, that person went in and said, we are working with city and contractors on the second phase. Snow has caused delay. So I can see that as a basic agency. And I can also see that they have reported on their construction date and construction completion date. And um, that might be something that you want to think about doing with your basic agency and with your grantees. All right, let's stop, and we've got a question. So, Catherine, um, can you help us with that? Sure. We actually have a few people asking the same question. We've gone through a little bit about how to, to change around the contacts, but people are asking how to remove contacts that are no longer with the agency, or what's the best way to do that? Yeah, notify us. We'll the quick answer is to notify us, and we will remove them. Thank you for that question. Great question. A related question, and I'm just going to skip to it now because sometimes this comes up, is um, folks want to know, I put in incorrect information, and I saved it, and I submitted it, and it's wrong. And that's another situation where you have to notify us after you've submitted it. So if it has come through to us, then you need to let us know, and we'll have to work with you on that. Uh, another Another way to handle, this is Chris Brazil, another way to handle um, a, chain, a person who's no longer there, uh, if they're being replaced by someone else, sometimes the easiest thing to do is just to go into the directory and change the the uh, previous person's first, last name, email address to the new person's first name, email address, um, because often that first person might be linked with one or more projects. You don't want to disrupt the uh, the communication uh, link to, to that project. We want to make sure someone's always assigned to it. So um, that's kind of the low-level hack I'd, I'd um, uh, encourage just to go and change the um, first, last name, email address of the old person to the new person. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, that's great. And that would be done in the directory level. So I'm going to demonstrate that here. On the directory level on the left, you'd go to directory um, in Ohio. And what Chris is um, trying to indicate is that, in this case, Kim uh, is no longer with the agency. So I'm going to edit by clicking on the Edit button over here on the bottom right. And then Kim's um, her contact record pops up. And Kim has been replaced by Chris um, Harper. That sounds like a good name. And then Chris um, Harper has a new email in there. And this is the, this is actually a, a workaround which would put this person's name in the database and I think it would be attached to all of Kim's projects. So that might be a good way to do it if you know that there's a direct replacement. So anyway, and you'll notice that it's not immediately changed. You do have to refresh and go to another tab and then you'll see those changes that are, have been made in the database. Um, I don't think I hit save, so that's probably what's going on. Oh, there it is. There we go. Okay. Great. Right, thanks for your questions. Let's get back into the um, 
the Bammer demonstration. So this is really the meat of uh, what we're uh, what we wanted to share. Well, part of the the meat of what we wanted to share with everyone today is instructions for how you would go in and actually enter in the Bammer information that's being requested right now. So you'll see, I went to dashboard, I selected the project, and it popped up with the project record. There's a lot of information in here, and where we're going to focus for BAMR purposes is the BAMR input, which is on the very far right of this tab on the horizontal menu. A lot of times it's where you're automatically directed, but if you happen to get to the general tab and it looks like that, just click over on BAMR input, and that's where you're going to focus your information for the purposes of BAMR. This year, we are looking for data from projects that were approved in FY16 or before. So BAMR is required for projects that were funded in FY15 or earlier. So if you're looking to put in information and the project's not listed and it's not telling you that it's required, then um, you can definitely enter information anyway, and we appreciate that. Um, but FY16 and earlier. OK. In your dashboard, again, I'm skipping all around here, but I wanted to point out that you'll have a notification on the right about whether your report is due or past due. And um, there's also a notification, which we're going to address. Um, there's an increasing interest from um, folks here and at your agency of keeping um, a better track of expired end dates. So we've added in some functionality and some checks and balances into the database so that you'll be notified if there is an expired end date. And there is an option, a pretty, um, we're hoping a pretty easy way that you can notify us that of that and get that amended at the same time you're doing your BAMR report. So there's kind of a two-in-one there. Let me move along. I'm going to skip through some of these fairly quickly because some of this might be um, somewhat self-explanatory. But once you get to the project record, you go to BAMR input, you see that there's five tabs on the left. And these are the ones that are required for BAMR. Some of these um, will give you an error message if you do not fill them in. In this field, you're going to enter in, if you happen to have a basic agency number, you might want to fill that in um, when this project was approved. <clears throat> And then you'll indicate whether it's an interim or a final report. Um, please note that you can use the BAMR as a closeout form if you select final and a few other um, checks and balances are met within the system. We have added a few other pieces of, of checks and balances to ARPANET so that we do not inadvertently close out a project that's not ready to be closed out. The next tab is the progress report. These are key milestones for your project, and we want to uh, know if the environmental review has been completed, if design has been completed, and if construction has been started. In this case, there was already some data fields filled in by the LDD or the grantee, so I know that construction started on July 1st, 15. And the estimated construction date is 6-30-2016 which, uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to save this, and um, um, it is a field that's going to be required. So if you see that our project, if, if you see that the project has um, an end date that has been, has already been passed, you can update that by adding in the new um, end date in this field, and that will automatically update the database and notify us and let all parties know that your agency has basically approved an extension for the end date of this project. And what that also means is that you can do this to extend the date by up to three years from the original end date. And again, we heard from many of you guys at the agency level and from folks here internally at ARC that and we needed to track that information to make sure that folks were all keeping their expenses within the approved um, time periods. The next tab is the financial report, and this is really valuable information for a lot of different reasons. You'll see that there's a few columns here, um, and the rows indicate the different funding sources. So you'll have the ARC amount, and then you'll have the other sources of matching funds listed there at, at the bottom. The approved budget and the approved percentages are the first two columns. The next columns are where we want your input is in the year-to-date amount. I want to stop and clarify what does your year-to-date mean. In our case, and for the purposes of BAMR, we mean cumulative in this case. We want to see all the spending from start date until now. So um, I just want to clarify there's been some questions about that in the past. 
So you want to make sure that you're able to report on the spending to date on this project. And in this case, um, there was 250000 approved, but there's only been 9000 spent. It's pretty early in this project life cycle. They have a lot of matching funds, and they have spent through quite a bit of the um, state funds. So we're going to update the information here to show that they spent 200000 of the state funds, and they haven't touched the local funds or the, the matching loan funds in this case. We're going to save the information there. And the demonstration for this project is this is an interim project, so I'm not indicating that it is final. But if this was a final um, report, there would be an option here to select that you are confirming that these are indeed the final project costs. And what's going to happen is the database is going to check and see if the ARC cost share is at or above the approved ARC cost share. And as many of you guys know, um, all ARC projects have matching funds. And the basic agency and the grantee need special approval if their final costs end up um, above that rate. And so we're not able to approve those in the final banner at this point. But when we talk to Chris, he'll show you how you submit an amendment to do so. If you're hitting that error message, um, we'll come back to that and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but in some situations, when you're submitting a final banner, you find that your financial information indicates that you have an underrun. Um, and sometimes your funding amounts are shifting. And if that amount is a budget change that is 10% or less of the total project cost, um, that's when you would be doing a minor amendment. And this is, this is an action that would have to happen anyway. Um, but we've just automated it by including it into this final BAMR uh, reporting process. So when you click that these are the final cost, costs, you are essentially approving that you as a basic agency are approving that um, minor budget shift of 10% of or less. So that's the two and one that I had referenced earlier. And if that's not clear, we can certainly come back to it. Um, it is outlined in the directions that we sent to you as a PDF. Um, again, I did point out there are some checks and balances. We know that um, uh, sometimes there are projects that are over or under, and we're building in some capabilities to, to make that go smoothly in the BAMA process. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next tab. Welcome questions. If you're hitting er errors, we'll stop in a minute and welcome any questions you have. The next tab is on performance measures. And the things I want to point out here are that, again, if this is a final report, you will be asked to indicate that it's final. Um, I did not do that in this demonstration, but um, this is an interim report. So you'd be reporting <clears throat> on any measures to date that you might have um, in this situation. <clears throat> so if you see fields that are zero, it's okay if it's an interim report. If it's a final report, you will need to either check with the LDD or the grantee or your staff or verify from a site visit what the final performance measures are at the time of closeout. During the interim, it's probably less. Um, sometimes you don't know, and that's okay. But at the final BAMR, we need the basic agency to um, report back to us how their progress to date um, is coming on that project for the expected performance measures. So here's an example. If you are going to install a 1,000 linear feet of sewer line, you would report at the time of closeout whether you installed 1,000 or 1,500 or 50 linear feet of sewer line, or how many households were improved. If you thought you were going to serve 1,000, but you actually exceeded that, then we would want to know that as well. Now, um, you'll remember that when we started this webinar, I gave you a link to the definitions of the performance measures. And that's important because there are some definitions that allow the grantee to, um, to measure their impact and, and tell us how they did on this project for a period that extends longer than um, the actual work time of when the project's being done. So if you can imagine, maybe a business or two are coming to a site, um, the construction's done, um, and they're ready to move in, um, they expect that jobs are going to be created, but right when they finish the construction, those jobs might not be on site. And that's okay. You report that maybe there's no jobs or five jobs, even though they expected 20. That is okay uh, because um, our definitions allow up to three years on some of our measures. And I say some because it varies by the type of measure. Anyway, we can go on and on about measures, but the point, the, the takeaways here are that you report for interim 
you report on the progress to date. And for final, you also report on to date. And you may need to reach out and contact your grantee or your LDD in order to get that information if you do not have it. You will essentially, again, another takeaway is you are reporting on the data that you know about. The next column is additional comments. And here you will be providing additional comments. Uh, these will be required if you have indicated that the construction completion date is longer or has changed from what it originally was. And this is part of that amendment process. So you must provide an explanation for why you may have changed the date or why there may be some delays or something else is going on the project. And in this case, in Ohio, we had a snowy year and we had a snow delay. Um, this is a place where you can communicate and let us know if there's anything going on that you'd like us to know about the project. You'll see on this page you have the option to have your grantee or someone else fill in the information. And if they had done that, they would have um, a data field filled in there. And um, oh, look at that. You can expand the text area. Um, my colleague was demonstrating if you caught that, you can grab the little triangles in the corner of this text box, and you can have a lot more area to work with in your display field. After you've reviewed your information, you save, and you will click to certify by selecting click to certify. It auto-populates the date. You save again. You're going to certify that the information is accurate. You'll click OK. You have the option to print at this time. Um, but please know you don't necessarily have to print. All this information is kicked back into the database. And um, after it saves, I'll show you where you can go in the database to review and to see the past information. And that's helpful also if you want to go back and look at the information from prior years or what your colleagues may have reported on this project. You can go into the Report tab and then scroll to the um, BAMR output report. Um, and that's one place to find it. And there's another place, which um, is in the Documentation tab under the Files tab. OK, so um, if your screen was looking like my screen, it just took a little while to save that information. And I'm going to demonstrate that in this Report tab, you can go and you can see that if I click to BAMR Output Report, you can see that today on 12-7, I submitted an interim report. This is all my data. And you can also kind of peek behind the scenes and see some of the checks and balances that ARC is doing with data entry, uh, whether there's an 80% rule or if there's inconsistent amounts. Um, so you also can poke around in the, in the report tab, and you can see um, financial snapshots. The documentation tab is the other place where you'll see the reports stored. Um, there may be, oh, it's already there, so there is not a lag. I can see that. Right here in the Files tab, there is an interim BAMR report that's been filed and saved in there for today. Let me stop and see if there's any questions. Feel free to type them into the Q&A box. And um, we're doing pretty good on time. We're about half an hour in, which is good. I think we've moved around pretty quickly this time. And um, let me talk out loud and see if I've covered what I need to do. I went through the main BAMR functions. I covered the new functions. Um, which are that you can ex uh, request an amendment for a minor 10% or under budget change for your project using the BAMR input. And you can also, the second thing you can do is um, request a time extension of three years or less by inputting that into the BAMR input as well. So those are two new things I want to highlight again that you can do in BAMR. <clears throat> You can uh, you can request. No, it's executed. No, that's oh, they will actually rec execute it. Okay, thank you. So um, Chris wanted to clarify that you're not just requesting in this situation; you're actually executing and and making that happen because, um, and, and that's not new. That's within the authority and the roles and expectations of the basic agency. Um, according to all of our MOUs, is that the basic agency can do those things. They can approve minor budget changes, and they can approve these time extensions as well. So um, it's not that you're actually asking us for that. You're just logging it and making it known and recording it so that um, we are all on the same page. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over. My colleague Chris is going to um, uh, talk about some of the things that you can do in ARCnet now that we've added some new features. 
Um, I think I've told you that you can use BAMR for project closeout. You can tell us if information is cor incorrect. And um, when we come back, we'll tell you who to contact if you have any questions. Yeah. Hello, everyone, again. Um, so the basic agency monitoring report is, is once a year, <clears throat> but there are some um, project actions that you may need to uh, do throughout the year. Uh, for example, um, well, you you may need to use the basic agency monitor report not just in the fall, but uh, whenever you need to close the project. If it's closing out in in spring or summer, you'd still come to the basic agency uh, monitoring report to do all the same things that that Julie mentioned. Um, let me go back to the dashboard. So if this were um, uh, May of 2017 and uh, this project 17391 was ready to uh, close. You'd go back into the BAMR, select final, um, save, and then, uh, as Julie mentioned, there are, there are a bunch of um, m many more uh, error checks that will be there to make sure that we don't uh, close a project that um, has a, a cost share that hasn't been approved by ARC or where the match, um, or the match rate is, is less than ARC is allowed to accept. Uh, by statute, and uh, so the same same thing she mentioned before. You have to verify the final performance measures, verify the final cost, and then you um, you wouldn't be able to uh, click the certify. You see the button is not available until all the error messages have been uh, uh, addressed. Uh, so you can do use this form throughout the year. We just proactively um, you know request that you you. Um, uh, check with us once once a year. Uh, starting in uh, first quarter next year, we're actually going to be looking at all the projects that that you uh, administer, and we'll be looking for any projects that will have an expired end date. And once a quarter, four times a year, you'll receive a new email. Um, it'll only be for those agencies that have uh, one or more expired projects, but you'll get a tickler four times a year that that asks you to go into um, ArcNet, uh, review the projects with an expired end date. And either close those projects because they are ready to, to close, do a final BAMA report, or if they're not ready to close, um, you know, we'll, we'll look to you to, to uh, either execute or request some kind of amendment where we may extend the project or revise the scope or, or what have you. So you, you should, um, in addition to the once a year BAMA, for all projects, you're going to get uh, four times a year a tickler for any projects that are expired uh, that, you're, that you're administering. Um, so in addition to closing out a project any time during the year, you all also may need to, um, well, as part of this, this tickler system, when we, we tickle you about an extended uh, an end date, uh, let's look at this one here, uh, Ohio 17483. In fact, you see it has an expired end date. So when you get this email that uh, will, will happen four times a year, you log in, you see this project has expired end date, and you would uh, click on it. Uh, and Julie mentioned before that when you click on this number, it takes you inside the BAMR uh, form. What you're going to want to do um, for expired projects is um, if you're doing an amendment outside the, um, uh, well, well, you can actually come in and use the BAMR form. You can do amend it two ways. If you get this notification, you can go inside the BAMR, go to progress report, and update the uh, the date here. That's probably the simplest way. Um, but if you if you're already beyond, if the project's already uh, three years beyond um, the original end date, you could not use the BAMR to extend it. You'd have to uh, actually come um, back to General Tap. And if you look over in your far right, you see two new forms we have, um, BA Amendment Form, ASAP Drawdown Request Form. It's what we'll focus on. So in the BA Amendment Form, um, let me delete this one. It's already here. You will come to a drop-down menu, and you'll select minor BA amendment and uh, and, and major BA amendment. Uh, if you're doing an amendment outside the BAMR form, uh, you can do the uh, the minor uh, form. Uh, and when we open it up, you'll see that the options that let you do are uh, modify the end date. Again, as Julie mentioned, you can extend the project up to three years, or you can do a budget uh, revision. Uh, the budget revision can exceed 10%. So you'll put in this uh, this field the amount of the um, the budget changes. Um, as long as the budget changes are 60,000 in one direction or less, um, you'll be able to use this form to execute that amendment. If you're doing a, a bigger change of scope or bigger budget uh, revision that maybe involves a hundred thousand dollar shift in costs, you will not be able to use this form because that will be more than a 10%. 
uh, change. And so, um, so this form is only for the time, um, uh, the end date extension, or for the 10% uh, uh, or less budget revision. Um, and you know, if those conditions apply, then you'd just come down here and you'd click I agree. Uh, as you see, the only signature required is, is the uh, signature of the basic agency to do this kind of amendment. So uh, you would receive a request from a grantee for, for a time extension or a budget change. And as long as the, it's, a, it's a relatively brief time extension, and as long as the uh, budget change is, is relatively small, uh, you can uh, execute, approve and execute that agreement, uh, that amendment on your own. Uh, if it's anything larger than that, um, you would have to use a major BA amendment. Uh, the difference here is that the major BA amendment has to go through ARC. You can't uh, execute that on your own. Uh, and so you look here, it covers just about anything else. It allows you to modify the start date, uh, modify the end date with our approval, um, approve uh, a cost share that's uh, significantly higher than what we initially approved, and, uh, and also you can still um, do a budget revision or any other amendments that you might list down here, a change of scope or what have you. Um, and then once you're done with all that, once you've put in um, – Everything is being amended. You'll see uh, three sets of signatures. Three sets of signatures. Uh, one, uh, you're the first signature. Uh, then after the the basic agency signs it, it will go to one of the ARC state program managers uh, for their concurrence. And after they've signed off, it'll come to um, one of the project coordinators, like me, Julie, Catherine, or Sarah. And, uh, and if necessary, we would, if it's a substantial enough amendment, we might. Uh, involve our division director to extend uh, to approve as well so there, there could be four signatures so these major amendments would, would necessarily take longer because it's not, it doesn't just involve your signature it involves um, you know more people in the ARC uh, decision making chain but that's warranted by the the nature of a, a, a very substantial uh, amendment uh, so th those are the uh, two types of amendments you can do uh, anytime uh, you, you can do the minor BA amendment um, all the functions there you can do within the BAMR. So, um, you know, it's your choice whether you want to use the minor BA amendment form or you want to do everything through the BAMR. But the, um, the major BA amendment form has to be done uh, using that form, and it has to have sign-off uh, by ARC. Uh, the other um, uh, uh, form we've, we've developed, and we've already been getting some uh, use by our state-based agency partners, uh, generally, uh, with those projects, we we set up um, uh, the, made the funds available through the ASAP payment system. And um, anytime, as a state-based agency, you need to come in and, and draw down funds for those projects, you would you would go um, to general um, ASAP drawdown request form. You'd create a new form, and um, as you've seen with the BAMR, it works pretty much the same way. You you fill in the blank uh, information, and um, if there are any errors, um, the form will catch the errors and uh, will not let you sign it until the errors have all been addressed. Uh, and then once you, you sign this form, uh, you're free to, to go and draw down the, um, the amount you requested um, uh, in, the, uh, in, in the form. Uh, so these are uh, two of the newest forms that ARC has to help um, improve the grants management process uh, post-award. And um, I think we'll, this is a good breaking point to see if we have any questions. Yeah, we actually have one very good question about the closeout process. Um, the uh, individual asks, should a final report be submitted when all funds are expended and the outputs are, of the project are realized, uh, regardless of the performance measure outputs alone? Or should the final report be submitted when outcomes are realized for things like job creation? Uh, they had the understanding that uh, validation for outcomes occurred three years after the completion of the construction project. So does the basic agency still have any role to play in that? And, and, uh, no. Um, the project is ready to close when all the funds – when it's ready to uh, be closed, first of all, when, when what was being constructed is completed. So once construction is completed, um, some, some basic agencies will, will take additional time to go through and verify maps. So construction might have ended in March, but it might take another two or three months to verify that the grantee did, in fact, expend all the match, uh, matching funds that they said they would. Uh, and so that's an, an extra administrative time. And, and generally, uh, after – uh, construction is completed and after match has been verified, uh, that's usually an appropriate time to go ahead and close the project out. 
whatever the status of the performance measures. They you may be halfway there or not not even um, any traction at all. Um, it's okay to close the project out at that point. The the other thing I wanted to mention about uh, w going back to the to the Bammer, there are times where a project won't get going at all and you'll need to uh, cancel it. Uh, for a cancel project, you will still use uh, a final bammer. Um, you will you'll go in and you'll select um, uh, final, and um, let me save it here. And then what you'll you'll go through is um, in financial report you'll zero all the numbers out. Um, the zero here, uh, and also on the performance measures. Um, if it has numbers, you'll zero them out as well. In this case, they're all zero. But if if the um, um, so once you you've uh, zeroed out all the um, um, the financial numbers and all the uh, performance measure numbers, and you've indicated as final, those three pieces of information, our system will recognize it as a cancel project that never never got off the ground, and you'd still go through and sign the BAMR like you would uh, any other any other uh, BAMR submission, and that's how you'd you'd cancel the project. Uh, one more thing, um, validation visit. So. Um, yeah. So, the, the, uh, in terms of the validation visit, that's separate from the um, the the BAMR process. Though the folks in our research and planning division uh, might use the, the uh, reports you've submitted to BAMR uh, to uh, inform their um, their questions when they uh, well they don't visit anymore. It used to be a validation visit. Now it's more of an interview over the uh, over the phone. But when if they call you about a um, uh, a particular project. It's it's really just to get your your background information on uh, how the project um, performed. Uh, it's probably more likely that the validation team will go directly to the grantee and not the the basic agency. But uh, there may be times where they'll they'll come and and, and ask you as well. Um, I guess a similar is uh, is with audits as well. Um, we 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 have had audits of basic agency projects. Um, generally, our auditors won't reach out. Um, at, I haven't I haven't known them to really reach out to the uh, to the base agencies all the time. Uh, still, primarily they'll go to the grantee, and um, and the audit will come to us, and we might engage uh, the the uh, base agency just for some background information on the project. But we we really um, see the primary responsibility for responding to validation visits and and audit re uh, uh, reports. That's primarily the grantee's responsibility, even even though it's a project that. Uh, is not administered by ARC. Any other questions, Catherine? Okay, thank you. Okay, great. So we don't have any active questions now. We're going to switch into continue a little bit of this interactive discussion. Um, we're curious. We have a couple questions for folks on the line. Um, I'm going to launch a quick question, and you can still enter into the Q and A box. Let me see. Is this poll being distributed? Okay. So we're recording this video. We've also recorded another video to it's a six minute. It's a short video, and we may be developing more of these just as tools to give to you guys about how to use ArcNet and how to do different things. So we've heard some feedback from folks that they can't actually access YouTube. So we want to know how extensive that restriction is and whether we need to do some workarounds for folks. So thank you for that. It looks like um, at least 80%. I'm going to give you another five or 10 seconds while I figure out how to close the poll. Um, so that's good feedback. Thank you, guys. I'm going to close the polls now. So if you haven't voted, out of 17 people voting, 14 are able to access YouTube at work. So that's good. Um, I'm going to do one more poll before we close up. But um, this is transitioning into the information that we want to um, hear back from you guys. And um, part of that is saying, you know, this is a program that's in development, and we're, as you can tell, we're, we're continually um, adding and changing things in the database, and our relationship with you, we're continuing to figure out ways to, to work with you guys, because you guys provide a really important service to us at ARC by managing um, our construction projects. We welcome your feedback on what's working, what's not working in ARCnet, and in the program overall. If there are features or reports that are helpful to your agency, we're open to considering them and having a discussion with you. Um, we have some pretty savvy database people who can make stuff um, adjusted to views or dashboards that you might need in your agency. Um, and in fact, one thing that we've heard from some basic agencies is that they're using BAMR on a quarterly basis, perhaps, 
just to have that as a input place for the grantees to report to them on what's going on. Um, now, that's not required by us, but you guys can certainly do that, and we can help you if you want to do something like that. We also want to hear from you either now or later if you think about it. Email bammer at arc.gov or type in the webinar box um, if there's technical support or outreach that we can do. Um, do we have more time? Do we have more time today? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, do we have more time today if you... No, I'm oh, yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we had scheduled this for an hour, and um, we've got probably another five or ten minutes. And if folks want to stay in the line and chat with us, um, I'm going to say that there is the capability. If you wanted to talk out loud, you can. I'm going to give you a secret code, which is not really secret. But if you star six, you can unmute your line, I believe, and you can talk to us. You can also use the Q&A box. Um, we know that travel is difficult, and that kind of gets to my next slide, <clears throat> or one of my next questions for you guys that I'll do a poll on. Um, we um, are here in Washington. We know that you guys sometimes have restricted travel and can't always make it, so we use webinars as a form. We're trying to use YouTube. We're trying to um, just be on the phone with you guys and support you, so we want to hear from you about what's working what's not. This is our team again. We'll share this with you again. Um, and then I'm going to turn it over to Chris in just a second after I do one more poll. Um, and we have one question. So why don't we do this order? We'll go to the question from Catherine. Um, and then we will do um, my poll, and then we'll go to Chris. All right. This is a pretty quick question here. Uh, may a basic agency use the BAMR report to both close out pro a project and request that uh, any ad additional funds that are left over in that project be used for another open ARC project that's being administered by the same basic agency if there's a budget deficit in that project? So the quick answer is you can use the BAMR to close out a project. Um, that's a two-part question. The other part is you, you can't use ARC funds for another project. So, yeah, I said cannot. That's a big not, emphasis on the not part. So if it's a different project, um, you would you would not be approved. Um, and the, the concept, the philosophy here is that when ARC's applicants are applying for funding, they have a specific scope of work and budget that's been approved by the director and the federal co-chair and the state. And um, so if the scope is XYZ in one area or community, um, that's the expected and intended use. And it would create concerns from um, an auditing and an IG point of view as well. So it's a good question. We appreciate your creativity, but not going to fly. And I, I'd like to add on that. Uh, we want you to close that project out that uh, has additional funds. And um, we can always look at, at um, uh, the, the other project requesting a, a, a cost uh, uh, overrun, uh, additional funds for overruns if they, if they need it. But we treat them as separate projects. Yeah, that's a good point. So if you've, if you've got a community need and it's maybe in a different area or something, you might want to think about um, coming back and, and talking to your state program manager about that. So um, I'm going to transition um, to the poll and then turn it back to Chris. So we're jumping around a little bit here. But on this kind of idea of, of working with you and providing training and feedback loops, there is an opportunity for, for we think, mostly state basic agencies. Um, there's a meeting that happens every year for program managers for the COSTA um, organization. They are coming to D.C. in March, as they do every year. And we're thinking about tagging on on the Wednesday after their meeting to provide um, an almost full day training on, on state basic agency administration and also providing some chances for you guys to exchange information amongst similar um, state basic agencies. So whether or not you're a state basic agency um, that does CDBG or not, we would welcome you know all state basic agencies to, to come to that. Um, that's good. I'm going to close the poll. We've got three votes, <laughs> which is terrific, yeah. Well, you'll be hearing from us more about that. It sounds like it might be too soon to know about that. Um, I'm going to turn it back to Chris, and then we will wrap up. <clears throat> yeah, um, I just wanted to add another feature that's been part of uh, – this is Chris again. I want to add another feature that's been part of uh, ARCnet um, for a while, but we haven't um, – but I guess uh, publicize as much. You can <clears throat> one of the the, uh, the advantages of, of having the uh, BAMR as an electronic form for the last two or three years is that it's allowed us to capture a lot of data electronically, <clears throat> so that we can track projects that are on track or having uh, some some challenges. So we, uh, if you look on this right panel, this panel on the left, we have reports. Um, 
and you click on report, uh, you, you can come to a set of reports we have uh, to, to monitor projects that are uh, in, in various stages of progress. It's, it's processing right now. Let's see. So I, I don't know if it's, um, we have other stuff open I need to close. Okay. Yeah, it's it's still processing. Yeah. Okay. Well, if we don't we don't get to it, we'll we can just cover it in another training video. Here we go. Uh, <clears throat> so you would uh, go to uh, Project General, and then um, we have a sort of a, a bunch of reports. I won't get into all of them. I'll just say generally, the analytical reports are intended to be reports that give us a bird's eye view across all 13 ARC states. Um, and these reports look at um, BAMRA compliance, uh, for example, uh, how many uh, states or agencies have submitted <coughs> their, their BAMRA reports. Uh, it looks at other things like unspent funds uh, by coordinator, by state, and by admin agency. And then the monitoring reports are, are meant to be the mirror image of that report. They, uh, they show you the specific projects that are referenced in the analytical report, so you can drill down and, and see which projects you, you need to address. So for uh, analytical reports, for example, in BAMRA compliance, uh, I can go here, run standard report, and at the end, I'm going to look at the uh, BAMRA compliance rate run report. And you'll see um, by each agency from ADECA in Alabama all the way down to uh, um, Virginia Department of Housing Community Development, It'll show us uh, uh, what the response rate has been to the uh, to the BAMR so far. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, this is well, this is not this is not current. This is the, the test site. But when you go to ArcNet, you'll see the actual uh, raw data uh, as it is right now. Because I think we're up to like 40, 40, 45 percent response rate on, on the BAMR right now. Um, similar uh, for um, if you want to see the actual uh, projects, you'd go to monitor report. BAMR update, and uh, the interesting thing here is that you can actually sort this by um, by your admin agency. So you could look at Ohio EPA, for example, uh, and all open basic agency projects, and it'll show you all the projects that are, are um, that that's still uh, looking for a, a BAMA report. Again, this is from the test site, not the live site. So you wouldn't you'd see a different set of data when you go and run this. But the uh, the interesting thing about these reports is they can be customized for any user. I can come and look at them by by coordinator by by uh, projects that I'm managing. Someone from Alabama, Kentucky can view it by Alabama, Kentucky projects. Uh, RD can view it by. Um, you know their agency and by their their state offices, so it's you can customize the results uh, to fit your specific situation. Uh, I'd encourage you when you have some spare time to go go in and just play around and see what's possible with these with these reports. We welcome your feedback and look at ways we can improve them. But we these are additional data tools we want to make available to to you, our partners, uh, so that we can um, you know all do our our job as as best as possible. Thank you. We, we have one question uh, hanging out here, and this is um, one that we something we haven't really covered this webinar. Uh, will more information be given regarding the errors that some of the agencies are receiving while completing the grantee invoice amount to include match on the ASAP drawdown requests form? Yes, uh, there was a there was an email for the that went out. Um, Last week, for the state, specifically to the state-based agencies, that um, that mentioned uh, uh, where that information would would come from. It's it's primarily we found an internal communications issue within the basic agency. The information is usually there, but uh, it, it needs to make its way to the finance people who are actually going into ASAP and, and doing the drawdowns. But we can we will follow up with additional uh, training materials to make sure you're you're aware of uh, where you can get this information from. But we've generally found that your agency does have all the information it needs to complete the ASAP. Uh, it's just a matter of the right people getting that to each other. Thank you. Let me see if there are any more questions really quickly. Uh, I don't see any more, no. Okay, great. Well, um, hey, we had um, terrific participation. We had really good representation and some good questions and discussion, too. So we appreciate your time. We're trying to keep it at an hour, so we're right at 2 o'clock now. 
Um, please keep the comments and questions coming. If we didn't address it um, today, we are available by email and phone. And um, again, we'll leave this um, this slide up with our contact information for a few more minutes. We'll post. Uh, Fingers crossed that we had no recording difficulties. We will be posting our slides on YouTube along with the audio so that you can come back to it. And again, we hope to chunk off some smaller videos so you don't have to listen to the whole thing for future topics. Uh, we hope you have a great rest of the week. And again, uh, please don't forget January 2nd is the deadline to get all your BAMR data into the system. Thank you so much. Thank you.